Welcome to In Touch with Officer Dawn and Ray the DA. I'm your host, Jenna McNeil. This week, Ray recognizes Lexington Police Department's Homicide Unit. In 2012, the unit had a 97% clearance rate for solving murder cases, which is extremely high comparatively across the nation. This unit has consistently maintained a very high clearance rate due to its outstanding administration and talented detectives. Ray commends the unit for their years of diligent efforts, which provide our office with solid evidence for prosecution. He references the Elizabeth Turpin case, which was successfully prosecuted 18 years ago, in large part to our collaboration with Lexington Police. Listen now to hear more. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the second part of In Touch. This is Crime Beat. I'm Officer Don with Fayette Commonwealth's Attorney Ray Larson. Uh, Ray, the first things first. Things first. Lexington Police Homicide Unit this year. Uh, just a fantastic job, as usual. But uh, I was looking at their clearance rate for homicides. One of the top in the nation. I mean, basically what, what they say is if you get killed here, if, if you commit a murder here in Lexington, Kentucky, you probably can go to prison. I mean, it's, that's just the deal. I mean, like a 90% chance or greater that you're going to go to prison. Can't say that about most cities our size around the country, can you? Well, it's called a clearance rate. That's, that's, what, um, that's how law enforcement refers to, to solving homicides or any kind of crime. It's called the clearance rate. Now, the national average on clearance rates for homicide is close to 60%. And in Lexington, for a number of years, it's been 90 to 92 percent. We dropped it down to like 89 percent one year, it's but it's up to yeah. it's up to 93 percent for 2012. Very impressive. Now the question is, uh, why why do they do so well? Part of it is the outstanding. Po uh, police work, uh, homicide detectives, there's an outstanding bunch up there. Uh, Rob Wilson, uh, Chris Schoonover, uh, Reed, Reed is, I can't remember, I, I just yeah, blanked. I don't know that guy. Bowles. Uh, He's the Reed ghost Bowles, detective. That's right. Uh, Franz Wolf, who I call Frank. Uh, Don Dunn. Is Franz the one that looked like uh, Roy on Emergency? Do you remember I that show I, Emergency? No. Growing up? I, think, I think I used to call him Roy in service. He looked just like Roy in Emergency. Anyway. I well, they, they've got a, and Ann Gutierrez is the sergeant, and they've just got a good bunch that just works these cases like crazy yeah. and has a really outstanding clearance rate. In Detroit, mm -hmm. the clearance rate's 30%. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's just we're very right. fortunate. But, but the question is, um, or the uh, uh, an issue is is well, what does this high clearance rate say about homicides in Lexington? Um, and a couple of things, uh, and that is is that there are not a lot of stranger murders. You know what I mean? I mean uh, they're acquaintance murders, and when that happens, then people know things. Mm -hmm as opposed to drive-bys and that kind of stuff that happen in a lot of these places that are more difficult to solve. But at any rate, you're right. Uh, it's an impressive statistic, and we're very fortunate to have uh, a police agency that emphasizes the clearance rate. For well, and kind they of do. Things. You talked about the clearance rate dropping to the 80% level. Mm -hmm. I was in the unit in 94 when it when that happened the, the chief he isn't put up with it I mean uh, we really refocused and we got that by the end of the year we got that rate back up to where it should be but it's whatever resources need to be put there that's where they that's where they direct them and the way that they grow their detectives too um, you, 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 you try to keep your more experienced detectives in and then as those guys leave you bring the the younger detectives and you and you groom them but there's a real thought to how that is handled in the Lexington Police Department. The other thing about the, the cases that you get, you know, in, in some cities, the police and the prosecutors, they don't work real well together. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons for that is it's the police department's job to get the killers off the street as quickly as possible 
and then it's the prosecutor's job to make sure that they're convicted and go to prison. And sometimes police agencies uh, worry more about getting them off the street than what kind of case they're going to send to the prosecutor. Because to arrest someone for murder, you have to reach a level that's called probable cause, which is a long way from what you need for a conviction beyond a reasonable doubt. Mm -hmm. We don't have that problem here. When our detectives make an arrest here in Lexington, they, it's, it's, it's been well thought out. They've, they've crossed the T's and dotted the I's. They make sure that not only is a person going to be taken off the street, but when you get the case as a prosecutor, that it's something that you're going to be able to actually prosecute and take to trial and get a conviction. How important is that? Oh, well, <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. It's, uh, we want good cases. Mm -hmm. uh, we always want a perfect case, but that, those don't happen. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I've, I've been in those meetings. It's like, okay, well, I've, uh, the guy's confessed, Ray. Um, here's the murder weapon. Um, uh, and you go, well, where's the videotape of him doing the murder? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm well, sorry, I don't have a videotape of it. <laughs> we, we, work, we work very closely with the homicide unit. Um, for example, I get the call, and we go to the scene, because you cannot substitute actual actually seeing what the scene looked like. Mm -hmm. You can get all the pictures and the videotapes and all that sort of thing, but you can't substitute that because then you get kind of a sense of what was really going on and, and that's important for the prosecutors. And I th and you know, if they have questions, uh, the police have you know legal questions, we're there. Sure. And, uh, and you know, it's a finally, I've worked with like investigators from New York, and mm -hmm. it's amazing how they do things in different agencies. For instance, in New York, if, if a detective wants to get a search warrant, he has to actually go through the prosecutor. He does not write his search warrants mm -hmm. and take them to the judge. Now, when I was doing it here in Lexington, if we needed a search warrant, the detective, I'd write the search warrant, sure. and you'd walk, up to, you'd walk up to the judge's house at 2 in the morning and knock on the door and get the judge out of bed if, it, if it's something that needed to be done, and the judge would review the search warrant right there on the doorstep and then uh, hopefully sign it for you if you had all your, your ducks in a row there and then you go serve the search. Tune in to the following station to hear the full episode.